All right, so I've got a new way to show you how to add weight, how to increase the swing weight of a golf club. I think it's gonna work. We'll see. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm here in the Elite Fit Golf Build Shop and we are talking about adding swing weight, trying to give your clubs a little bit heavier head feel to them. Now, you may be needing to do this just because the club feels too light, or maybe you've cut down the club, you've made it a little bit shorter, and you've lost a little of that head feel, and you're looking to try and get that back. So, there's a few different ways to go about this traditionally, and I've shown them, I've talked about them here on the channel before, but there are three main ways. Now, the first one is good old-fashioned lead tape. You get a strip of lead tape, you cut it off, you stick it on the back of the club, and you've got a heavier golf club head. Things I like about lead tape, well obviously, it's very easy to use, it's very fast, and it's very precise. You can put it exactly where you want it, and it does the job. The only real downside is, well, some people may not like the look of lead tape slapped all over the back of a golf club. Second option, and I've talked about this before in other videos, this is tungsten powder. You can also find lead powder, although that seems and sounds a lot more dangerous to me, so I would stick with tungsten. But this is just metal powder that's heavy that you pour down inside the shaft from the butt end, goes down to the bottom, stops down here where the head has been attached. You get a little cork with some epoxy, you ram that down in there, and there you go. You've now added weight again to the head of the golf club. Now, this isn't obviously quite as easy as lead tape or as fast, but it's still pretty easy. Yes, you do have to take the grip off, so that is one downside. But after you do that, the big plus for this method is you don't actually see it when you look at the club. It's not like lead tape slapped all over the back. You can't tell that anything's been done to it by looking at the club. Now, the one downside really of tungsten powder is it does change the feel of the golf club and it sort of varies by how much powder you put in it, but it can give the golf club a bit of a wet sandbag kind of feel when you hit a ball. Now the last option, and you've seen me use these on countless build videos that I've done, are these, either brass or lead shaft tip weights. Now these just go, they fit down into the tip of the shaft, they have a little lip here on the end so that it just sits there. You put it together with the club head and you get a heavier, swing weight or a heavier head feel. Now, obviously this is going to be the most complicated method as far as actually doing it because it requires you to either take the club apart in order to install these or be in the stage of assembling a golf club where the head and the shaft are not together yet so that you can put this tip weight on and then epoxy everything together. So that is a major downside for it. Now. The good side of this is that, again, like the tungsten powder, you can't see it. You don't know that it's been done by looking at it. The other good side, or the other good thing, is that you don't feel it. You don't notice any sort of change in the feel with these tip weights inside the shaft. Now, the question is, is there a way to maybe take two of these options, combine them together, and get maybe a best of both worlds compromise method that does everything we want it to do in an easier to put together method. So what if we took the tungsten powder method and we combined it with the shaft tip weight method, could we get kind of the perfect result? So that's what we're gonna do. We are going to take the brass tip weight and install it like you would the tungsten powder, that being dropping it down into the shaft, epoxying it in there. And then we're just gonna see, well, one, did it work? Did it give us more weight? Two, did it change the feel? Did it, you know, does it do anything weird like the tungsten powder can do where it changes how the club vibrates? And three, how stable is it? How secure is it in there? Because we don't obviously want to install it and then a little bit later after you've hit it a few times, all of a sudden it sounds like a rain stick because you've got that weight tipping back and forth in the shaft. So that's what we're going to do. Let me show you the whole process of installing these and then we're going to hit some balls and see how it works. All right, first thing let's do is just check the swing weight of this golf club, see where we are starting out. Okay, next up, well, we're gonna have to take this grip off because we need to get access to the shaft 
from the butt end. So this grip was installed with compressed air, so very easy to pull this grip off, again, with compressed air. And when we're all finished, we can put it right back on again using the same method. Now we also wanna make sure if you have any sort of tape covering the hole on the butt end of the shaft, we cut that off, we remove that just so we have a nice clean opening to get down into the shaft. Okay, next thing we have to do is we're gonna to have to modify these tip weights just a little bit because they all have, again, this little lip on the end of them that keeps it basically from sliding too far up into the shaft when you use them in the way that they are normally supposed to be used. But for this, because that little part's a little wider and we wanna make sure this gets all the way down to the very bottom of the shaft, we wanna go ahead and just either grind, file, sand this little lip part down to get it even with the rest of the weight. Now, this is going to reduce the weight just a little bit, maybe say a gram or so, depending on what weight you're using. So just something to be aware of, but I think it's a good idea just to give us a better chance of success. Now the next step or the next thing we're gonna need is you're gonna want some sort of ramrod. I've shown you how to build one of these before. You can get the tools very, excuse me, you can get these supplies very simply from any hardware store and just sort of make it yourself very inexpensively. But we need something basically to be able to ram this weight down just like we would be doing with the tungsten powder and cork. So now that we have our ramrod, the next thing I always like to do whenever I'm doing any sort of weighting like this is I just take the ramrod and slide it all the way down as far as it'll go inside the shaft and then just put some sort of mark either with a sharpie or a piece of tape, something, just so I know that's as far down, that's the very bottom of the shaft right there. And that'll basically tell me when we go to actually insert the little tip weight that we did in fact get it all the way down where it needs to be and it's not stuck somewhere higher up. So that way you can see basically just in the change of the height of that little mark we made that yes, that tip weight is all the way at the bottom where it needs to be. So now we're gonna mix up some epoxy. I would say you can use probably any epoxy for this as far as any two-part epoxy goes, whether it's a five-minute quick epoxy or a longer setting epoxy. So what we're gonna do now is just mix up the epoxy and then just sort of cover the tip, cover the, call it the bottom half of the weight at least. Now, obviously, depending on how much weight you're gonna use, these weights get longer and longer as they get heavier and heavier. The more weight you're planning on putting in there, I would say probably makes sense to have a little more epoxy on it if you've got a heavier eight or 10 gram weight, just because there's more mass there to sort of hold in place, so it makes sense to use a little more epoxy. We're just using four grams, so not gonna use a ton of epoxy, just a little bit. At this point, we're gonna just go drop the weight down in the shaft and then use the ramrod to just work it down all the way till it's set in the bottom of the shaft and just give it a few good taps to make sure it's all the way down there. We can see from the mark on the ramrod that it is bottomed out perfectly, we're set. At this point, we're gonna let this dry for whatever amount of time you need for your particular epoxy to dry. And at that point, we can go put the grip back on and see what we got. Okay, I've put the grip back on, went ahead, weighed it again, got a swing weight for it, and as you can see, basically the swing weight went up eh, between one and a half and two points, which for a four gram weight, that's basically what we would expect to happen. So now the question is, well, how does it feel, and is it gonna stay in place after repeated shots? All right, so I've now hit probably about 25 balls, and in between hitting balls, I was also kind of banging the club head on the ground or banging the grip on the ground, seeing if I could get anything to start to come loose or rattle or anything like that. And I do not hear, I do not feel, I did not feel any sort of rattle. It just feels, it feels perfectly solid. It feels just like the club did before I put the weight in, only slightly heavier. So really kind of exactly like the tungsten powder method as far as how we did it, but without that tungsten powder muted feel that you sometimes get. So really, I would say that this may be my new go-to or one of my go-to methods for swing weighting an existing golf club, a, cl a golf club that's already built because it's way easier than taking the head off, cleaning everything out, installing tip weights, and then putting it back together. So yeah, I think this definitely could work. 
So if you're looking to add some weight, add some swing weight to a golf club, that is, especially if it's an existing golf club, that either you just want more weight in the head, or maybe you cut it down and you need a little weight added back to the head to get some of that feel back, I think this method is a really good option. And from at least my initial testing, seems like it doesn't have much downside and does everything we want it to do. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be alerted when I post new videos. Make sure you check out my other channel, Elite Fit Golf, where I do golf club reviews and fitting videos. You can find me on Instagram at Mobile Club Maker, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.